Yeah, so guys, and welcome to episode two of the £10 So Rare Road to Glory. So, in the first episode, we did a little bit of an intro and we showed you guys a nice little sniping trading method. In today's video, we will continue doing the same trading method, but what I'm going to do is go into a little bit more detail about how I know what sort of trade off to send over, depending on what sort of deal the sniping bots won. In the first episode, we did a £10 So Rare credit giveaway, and we're going to be doing the exact same thing in this episode. But first off, we'll go and pull the winner from episode one. Now, all you need to do to enter this is just go and like the video and leave a comment of your so rare name. So, for example, Jimifer has gone and won himself £10. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and send him over £10 on so rare. And likewise, if you guys want to go and enter today's, just make sure to leave a comment on your name and we'll go and pull a winner in tomorrow's episode, just like we have today. Always, if you guys are also interested in signing up so rare, there is a referral link down below. Once winning five cards on the bidding market, you will get yourself a free card. As always, you know, you can make money, but there is also money to be lost, so please do play responsibly. So we're now going to show you guys the stuff that we bought in yesterday's episode and the profits we went and sold them for. Now, I did sell two players a little bit cheaper than what I wanted to, uh, but that's because I wanted to make sure I had money for this episode, because the last thing I wanted to be stuck with was going into this episode with a quid to trade with. So I've taken slightly smaller profits, but we're still not looking too bad. So the first player we went and picked up was, or sold on, was uh, Janik Haberer. We picked him up for £3.97 and we sold him pretty successfully there at £5.07, giving us a £1.10 profit on the likes of him. So the second player we went and sold on was one of our 14p players. We managed to pick him up for 14p and flip him right there at 55p, so that is going to be a nice little 41p profit. And the last player is Samuel Mitamarusi, I'm sure. Who we went and picked up for £2.5p and sold for £2.65. I did want to sell this guy for £3, but again, I wanted to make sure that I had a decent little cash flow ready for today. So, in the last episode, we had quite a successful run. We managed to go and pick ourselves up 10 deals. We managed to go and sell on three of the deals. And what we're going to be doing in today's episode is just doing, you know, more of the same sort of trading method. Now, we've kind of improved the trading method a few ways already. First off, we have gone and scouted more people to go and try and scout deals off of. Now, not all these guys are guaranteed to be auto buyers, but a few of them are traders. And obviously, if traders are getting deals off people, they're probably the sort of people that you want to try and get deals off people. So we have increased the list, I think, from 8 to 15. So hopefully it's going to double the, um, you know, the amount of deals we can get. So in today's episode, we're going to be focusing a little bit more on what do I want to send over trade offers of. So what we've done is we've got all of the... Um, I guess auto snipers at the top. We got ourselves Bologna. We got ourselves Conor McGregor. Bot. We got ourselves King Butch, and We got this trader. We got this trader. We got this trader. We got this trader. Although some of the traders are actually bots. We got this trader. We got Penguin. Uh, we got this auto buyer, and that's that's me. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we go through them one by one by one, just alternating on them and waiting for them to go and win themselves a brand new card. You know, brand new card because right now it'll be Robin Hillerman. If we go and press compare price back out, sorry, overview and cards, it will go and show us a new card if they've won a new card. Likewise, likewise, likewise. There we go. So that was the previous most recent card, and he's won one of these four cards. Now, when it comes to knowing what to send a trade offer off to, uh, what the trade offers to go and send to the person, you kind of got to look at the deals they've got themselves. I'll get better examples with the likes of Alona. So, for example, let's say he's gone and won that deal. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see who he won the card off of. So, he's won this card off of this guy. Now, I can look at the dates and see that this guy literally won the card, like, four or five days ago. So, one of the first things I look at is I look at, okay, so the card that they're selling to this bot, how many days ago did they go and win them? And again, four days ago. Which means if I go over to this guy's profile, if I'm going to go and send over trade offers, it'll be four days or later. Likewise, you'll see with some people, they would have bought the card a year ago, which means I'll really only send over trade offers, especially when I'm trying to fill them out at the beginning of a year or later ago, because I'm going to try and basically pick the exact same sort of cards that he's listed up for a undersell. Sometimes people buy cards a year ago and they'll sell them really cheap because they're not using them anymore. And likewise, you're kind of going to apply that logic, um, you know, to, uh, to the cards you're going to try and get. You've also got other examples where they sometimes win them as a reward. There we go. So this guy's won him as a reward, and he's listed him up, and he's gone and sniped him. Now, this occurs because people win stuff as a reward, but obviously when you win stuff as a reward uh, by playing SO5, you don't necessarily want the card, and therefore he would you know, go and list him up cheap so he could sell him fast. Well, therefore, what I would do is I'd go and see if he had any more cards that are rewards, and I'd go and pick them up. Uh, and there's a few other cards or a few other, like, I guess, subsections. Sometimes you can see that someone has only just gone and won the card on an auction. 
that's not going to be an example right there. But sometimes they just go and win the cards on auctions and then want to go and sell them instantly. Uh, sometimes you can tell that people are just happy with a small profit. For example, let's say if this number right here was like £1.50 and he's going to want it for two quid, but in reality they're about three, four quid. You therefore know that, well, you can just go and see what sort of time. So he won him like a day or two ago um, and he's happy with a small profit. So what you do is you send over some trade offers that are a small profit him, but still have room in the back end. So what we are going to be doing is we are going to continue doing this method and we'll show you guys any deals we do manage to get. So we managed to go and pick ourselves up a deal. We managed to get ourselves a Frederick Magisto um, from one of the people who was just, I guess, selling everything off cheap. Picked him up for about £1.50, going to go and sell him for £2.20. So nothing too crazy, but we did manage to get ourselves a deal. Uh, sadly, the guy didn't really give us any other deals. Normally when you get one deal, you can then go and farm a few more off the people like we've seen in previous episodes, but we only managed to pick him up. But uh, yeah. Nice profit nonetheless. So there is the odd sign which you can tell not to go for a card. So um, I've seen that one of the bots right here has one over Rob Holding. But I can see that he's one for 56p. But what I can kind of see is he probably meant to listen for £5.60. So there's no point pursuing this guy. Because this is a very obvious error of he's Mr. Zero. Because he's Mr. Zero, it's not like he's in a hurry to sell stuff. He's just obviously mislisted. So there isn't really anything to act upon if you can spot this. And you're just wasting your time and probably the other person's time sending over offers when you can see that he's blatantly just Mr. Zero out of his listing price. So we've gone and got ourselves another deal and weirdly enough, I actually got it in a buy now. Um, now, the reason I've gone and done this is because I was tracking some of the auto buys and a few of the auto buyers bought uh, a player off the same, I guess, account. And the person did ask for no trade offers. So I just kind of went through the buy nows and they actually, you know, had some pretty decent deals up for buy nows. So I'm gonna pick this guy up here right here for uh, 56p, I believe right here. Now the reason I was happy to buy this guy is because he played today, well he played yesterday, and because he played yesterday I now know that he's safe going into the next uh, game week, I don't have to worry about him being injured uh, or anything like that. If we go and check out what price he managed to get him for, so he managed to get him for I think 60p, uh, down here, if we can go down here, managed to get him there for 56 I'd be quite confident I'd be able to sell him for like 80p, maybe even close to a quid maybe going into um, the next game week because of uh, him obviously going from being a non-starter to getting back-to-back -back scores. So not too bad, 50p right there, maybe nearly going to double our price on him. Um, but there we go, I'm trying to get a few more deals, I'm not quite sure if I accept them, because I didn't really like the other buy now, so I did send over a few trade offers, because yeah, no, I can tell this guy is clearing out his club. Let's get three deals, and once again, all of the exact same player, so let's go through them. So we've got ourselves a Pascal Stinzel. Now he plays tomorrow, so there's a little bit of a worry that he did start last game, but won't start the next game, and as a result could go down in price. But we did manage to go and pick him up for 97p, with the plan of selling him for £1.53. We've got ourselves a uh, Konstantinos Safalos. Now, he didn't play today, so there shouldn't really be much of a price effect on him for the next week. Picked him up for 42p, plan of selling him for 83p. And we've got Philip Foster, who actually scored a goal and an assist today, which means he should hold a really, really solid price for the next week. Uh, we picked him up for £1.95. We're going to go and sell him for £3.6p, uh, meaning in total we've managed to make ourselves a £1.95p profit off them. But I only have £3.95 to work with. So we have managed to now get five deals of the day, but I'm not quite sure how much more we have because we are basically running out of gas. So we are going to call it a day. Now, I did kind of want to get another deal, but we just really couldn't get one. I've been sitting here for, a, it must be almost an hour or two, uh, just sending over deal like offers. We couldn't manage to get a deal. Now, this is going to be the hardest time in the whole of the Road to Glory to make money because I kind of have to, you know, value the, um, I guess, my cash flow a lot, lot more. Because right now I've got all this in £3.95. But obviously, if I was going to blow all the money, then I've got no money tomorrow if some of these didn't sell. And I'm actually trading in some of the hardest days to trade on. Because over the weekend, there is little demand to buy new cards. Because obviously, people would be going into midweek. Well, starting Tuesday after the, I guess, the midweek deadline starts, which means people are going to start building their weekend teams, you're kind of trading in a bit of a progressive market where the market normally will just rise between Tuesday to Monday. Sorry, Tuesday to Friday. Whereas today, the market's a bit all over the shop because it kind of depends how good people's performances are. Obviously, if someone gets an unexpected DMP, it can drop someone's price a lot more. And there's, again, not many people building their teams over the weekend. Um, they normally wait for midweek to start building their teams. Sometimes it's even due to uh, team information. So sadly, we have only been able to kind of turn over about £3.50 today. But as I said, you know, we're, it's all coming with experience and the weekend is going to be the slowest time. This time next week, hopefully we'll be, you know, near 70, 80, 90 quid. And we'll just be able to throw deals out left, right and centre. But we are ending today, once again, on £4 liquid and all you do see in front of us. We've got ourselves 12 players. 
um, I think like five or six, which should be relatively easy to sell, and the rest will just eventually go and sell on. But thank you very much for watching, and we shall see you guys tomorrow with episode three of the £10 So Rare Proto Glory.